Welcome to Dry Outdoor. The most illustrious lineage of sneakers in history began with the Air Jordan 1, which is referred to as the shoe that started it all. The modern sneaker culture as a whole was in many ways launched by it, and it almost never happened. According to legend, Michael Jordan, a young player for the Chicago Bulls, was in high demand for endorsement deals in 1984, with sneakers undoubtedly playing a major role. After a great collegiate basketball season at the University of North Carolina, Jordan had just finished. He attended discussions with both businesses since he favored Adidas and Converse personally, but no agreement was ever reached. Michael Jordan at the time loathed Nike so much that he refused to attend a meeting with them, which sounds bizarre to us now. His mother, Dolores Jordan, convinced him to go to the Nike campus in Oregon and hear their sales pitch. His intention was to perform the bare minimum to satisfy his parents and agency, but he ultimately left with a contract that was exceptional. If Michael Jordan had signed with another team, he could have had to compete with legendary athletes like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, but instead, he shone in the Nike spotlight. At the time, he received a higher salary than any other athlete with a footwear endorsement. He received his own shoe line dubbed Air Jordan from Nike, which made him the face of its expanding basketball business. The original and renowned 1985 pair was retro reissued as the Jordan 1 Retro High OG Shadow. The shoe's foundation is made of black leather, and there are gray accents on the toe, heel, collar, and side of the shoe. The black wings emblem on the ankle collar contrasts with the gray OG Nike marking on the tongue of the black and gray Jordans. The white midsole of the Jordan 1 Retro High OG sneakers stands out sharply from the shoe's otherwise dark color scheme. A low-top version was released in 2015 after its last vintage in 2013. Traction. The Air Jordan. I has excellent traction, as you already know from the performance teasers. Even still, I'll give it a solid 9.5 instead of the full 10. The traction is outstanding when viewed from the front to back. The combination of the multi-directional circles and the soft, flexible rubber results in medial and lateral movements that are equally remarkable. This traction surface performed admirably on both dust-free and clean indoor courts, and it is likely to perform admirably outside as well. Cushion. I've mentioned this before and it very much goes without saying that cushion wasn't excellent. You can use any insole you feel would work best for you and it would be a significant improvement if you use it instead of the one I demonstrate in the video review. Material. The full leather uppers offer durability and weight, and the rubber midsole and outsole add traction. Although they aren't particularly hefty, you do notice it during transitions. The most important aspect is that the kind of leather utilized enables increased strength and durability, which might be a pleasant characteristic to have. Fit. Both the midfoot and the heel provided good lockdown. I had to change the lacing after roughly every game since as you spend more time on the court, the fit would start to loosen up from the moisture and heat accumulation. Full length bottom loaded zoom air and midsole. Not much ventilation although there are openings on the toe and a nylon tongue to provide some, albeit slight, airflow. Support? None. You can buy an arch support insole if necessary. But aside from that, these are essentially flat-based sneakers. Overall, these could be played, which is the most important thing. The Air Jordan 1 Alpha delivers various advancements in every category. Most notably the cushion thanks to its Phylon midsole and full-length bottom-loaded Zoom Air. If you desired the look or styling of an Air Jordan 1 with modern tech, you could either replace out the insoles for cushion or choose to get the Air Jordan 1 Alpha.